a country enforcing its own authoritarian and tyrannical laws to repress third country nationals or target its own citizens living abroad, violating the international rule of law and the territorial integrity of third countries. China has reportedly set up a parallel policing mechanism in dozens of countries using illegal methods. Let's take a closer look at the Chinese Communist Party's hidden overseas campaign. In order to apprehend overseas offenders, security agencies usually take the assistance of Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization. Diplomatically, the establishment of bilateral extradition treaties is another procedure. China, however, has adopted an illegitimate method to apprehend those overseas citizens they perceive as offenders. Madrid-based human rights organization, Safeguard Defenders, in its 21-page report titled 110 Overseas Chinese Transnational Policing Gone Wild, has revealed the presence of dozens of Chinese police service stations in major cities around the world. The report further exposes how the campaign was launched on a humble scale in 2018 in order to allegedly combat the growing issue of fraud and telecommunication fraud by Chinese nationals living abroad. Now, these so-called service stations are violating the international rule of law. The Chinese have set up a parallel policing mechanism to target dissidents and place surveillance on its own nationals. The report claimed that from April 2021 to July 2022, 230,000 nationals had been persuaded to return to face criminal proceedings in China. We know we, before this were, became a news report, uh, there are people being uh, approached or be, are often being approached by individuals, um, either um, using threat or uh, kind of a way to persuade them to, to return home. Uh, but obviously these people don't come across as police. Uh, they disguise themselves like a, a business people or diplomats or, so this safeguard report really kind of exposed these hidden um, uh, police stations and the, the police, undercover police that actually operating in these uh, countries. Safeguard defenders also revealed how overseas Chinese diaspora associations are tied to the Chinese Communist Party's United Front Work Department. Some of these organizations are registered to handle a liaison role with the Chinese police in violation of local regulations. The details of China's overseas campaign has stunned security agencies and governments in Europe, Canada, and the United States. FBI Director Christopher Wray said the United States is deeply concerned about unauthorized Chinese police stations in cities like New York as they violate sovereignty and circumvent standard judicial and law enforcement cooperation processes. Canada and the Netherlands are also joining the United States in launching investigations into these secret Chinese police stations. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police said it is taking threats to the security of individuals living in Canada very seriously and is aware that foreign states may seek to intimidate or harm communities or individuals within Canada. Now focus. Inside is they are already controlling, you know, but outside is a little more difficult to control. Therefore, they want to focus on the yeah, dissident Chinese who live in free countries not to speak freely. If they do so, then they will, uh, uh, how you call, control uh, and uh, their own families who live inside China. 
Beijing has been accused of using illegal methods against targeted individuals or their family members, which undermines any due process and the most basic rights of suspects. Furthermore, the disregard for the use of proper channels and processes in international relations is blatant. Despite China's insistence on the establishment of bilateral extradition treaties or other mechanisms of judicial cooperation, which serve both a specific propaganda purpose in legitimizing the Chinese Communist Party-controlled judicial system, as well as nurturing a chilling effect for the rapidly growing number of individuals fleeing China, it rarely uses these legal international procedures. Rather than cooperating with local authorities in the full respect of territorial sovereignty, China, thinking itself beyond reproach, has instead set up an alternative policing and judicial system within third countries. As investigations against China intensify, the world can remain hopeful that China will be held accountable for their blatant disregard of international law and human rights. These voices from Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan occupied Kashmir are showing their anger for discrimination, exploitation, and mistreatment by Pakistan. These protesters burned tires, blocked roads, and shouted slogans against the Pakistani Prime Minister, Shibaz Sharif, for what they called insults against their Prime Minister. Sadar Tanvir Ilyas by Sharif. In what could be referred to as a blatant violation of government protocols, Shehbaz Sharif was caught on camera insulting Pakistan-occupied Kashmir Prime Minister Tanvir Ilyas when he tried to correct him during a speech. Shehbaz Sharif was in POK to inaugurate the operationalization of two more phases of the Mongla Dam on Jalum River. The dam, which fulfills Pakistan's electricity and irrigation requirements, has been built at the cost of displacing Kashmiris. The Prime Minister of Pakistan forgets about the victims of uh, Mangla Dam, those hundreds and hundreds of villages that were drowned uh, to give uh, room for uh, Mangla Dam the families that were uprooted uh, who are known as uh, Mutasirin and Mangla affectees, Mangla Dam affectees. He forgot to uh, talk about their uh, uh, sacrifices. On Moreover, he didn't even invite the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir. He happened to be there to attend the ceremony, but he wasn't officially invited. Let's take a closer look at the underlying complexities at play. Pakistan forcefully occupied part of the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir in 1947 and calls it Azad Kashmir or Free Kashmir. It has its own prime minister, president and Supreme Court, but the region is directly controlled by Islamabad through the Kashmir Council whose chairman is the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Islamabad has appointed its Lent officers, the IG police, chief secretary and finance secretary in POK to keep its dominance in the region. Unfortunately, the people in Pakistan occupied Kashmir have suffered for the majority of its seven decades. Many even lack basic facilities like drinking water, regular electricity, adequate education, and operational medical facilities. There is also a complete media blackout from this region. Tourism in this part of the world is almost nil, and inflation is exceedingly high. This has greatly angered the indigenous people in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. When compared with the Indian-controlled part of Kashmir, 
where commerce, tourism, and prosperity thrive. The illegally occupied part of Kashmir by Pakistan continues to suffer in poverty. Pakistan ke jo bade bade shahar hai wahan pe electricity nahi hai, wahan shortage hai, gas nahi hai, peene ka pani nahi hai, wahan pe jo price hike jo hai wahan pe keemte jo aasman ko chhu rahi hai to wo zahir hai hum to unki colony hai aur hum to directly affect hote hain wahan pe to wahan to infrastructure naam ki koi cheez hai hi nahi whenever the people of pakistan occupied kashmir have spoken out and demanded equal rights they have been detained under the anti terrorism act a large number of political activists from pok who have migrated abroad are demanding that the international community especially the united nations make the region free from pakistan's clutches activists also blame pakistan for using the region as a training and launching pad for various terrorist organizations with an aim to create disturbance in india's jammu and kashmir the misuse of pakistan occupied kashmir's territory has outraged kashmiris and their anger towards islamabad is legitimate with each passing day anger and resentment in the so-called azad kashmir is rising the day is not far when the indian model of governance will be demanded by these citizens of pakistan occupied kashmir